All right, we're back in session. Um, we're on to uh, county matters. These items include non-routine or controversial matters that are listed alphabetically by department. A member of the board, staff, or public may request that an item may be heard out of order. Do we have any changes in that order? All right, we're going to go on to uh, 4.1. I need to read it before we pull it. We need to read it when I pull it. Okay. All right. Approve a budget adjustment for fiscal year 17-18 in the Board of Supervisors Department, increasing services and supplies by 12,000. Approve a budget adjustment for uh, fiscal year 17-18 in the Contingency General Fund Department, uh, decreasing appropriations for contingency by $12,000, increasing general fund appropriations of $12,000. Yeah, Chairman um, Girls, we're going to ask that we just pull this from uh, pull this item. Uh, we can support this vote, and uh, Supervisor Finley has said he's going to recuse himself from this, so you know, the most to uh, actually cover it out. So we're asking we just pull this. Okay. All right. We'll move on to uh, four point two. Modify the allocation list for the County Administration Department General Service Division to read as follows: six and a half. Uh, facility Operations Superintendent or Facilities Operations Supervisors or Building and Grounds Lead Worker or Buildings and Grounds Maintenance Worker 1 or 2 or Maintenance Worker slash Custodian or Custodian affected July 17th, 18th and direct that said changes be made to the allocation of positions listing. No impact to the general fund. No additional allocations are being added. Right, so simply the department's requesting to modify the positions that are listed under uh, their allocation. Uh, they're wanting to create a career ladder uh, growth for opportunities and enable the department more flexible staffing. We're not, as you had stated, asking for additional allocations, just adding a classification that exists. It just had been removed some time ago, several years ago, and it was not needed. We're deciding to add that back. So that's a facilities operations supervisor. Okay. Any questions or shall I? No. All right, any uh, thoughts from the audience? Okay, we'll bring it back. Uh, Here's a motion, 4.2, to uh, accept it as presented. I second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same time. All right. On to 4.3. Allocate to the Agriculture Commission slash uh, Sealer of Weights and Measures Department 1. Uh, Ag Commissioner, Agricultural Commissioner uh, slash Seals and Weights and Measures be a set salary range at D040 effective July 1st, uh, 2018 and set and direct that said changes be made to the allocation of posting listing. Approximate cost and salary and benefits per month for Agriculture Commissioner Sealers of Weights and Measures is 7757 for Step A. First thing I wanted to notice on the organizational chart under Agricultural Biologist, there is a typo. It says a 3. It should be a 2. That made a significant difference. So the county had entered into a contract with Humboldt County back in 2012. Uh, to provide a needed agricultural commissioner and sailors of weights and measures services. The contract expired in June 3, 2018. So in order for us to recruit a new commissioner sailor, I do need to have an allocation added to the listing. So we are requesting that of you. This would be a part-time .6 FTE position. And I understand that it was in the budget preparation. All right, any questions? All right, any public comment? Uh, good day, John Brower from Junction City. And uh, as our local ag department takes on more responsibilities, um, uh, the uh, our existing ag department is one person, Angela Blanchard. 
the existing ag commissioner we pretty much have only seen here once that I'm aware of. Jeff uh, rarely makes it over the hill. We share him with Del Norte and Humboldt County. Um, I think uh, Angela is stepping up in a big way to uh, assume the responsibilities for uh, state uh, commercial cannabis cultivation inspections and uh, She's been on a quick learning curve and uh, has done a, a great job. I wonder if we could, this position of Ag Commissioner, I understand Angela is uh, uh, taking courses and uh, um, uh, moving toward being able to be, to satisfy the requirements for Ag Commissioner. Um, perhaps we could uh, uh, describe this position in a way that our existing Ag Department, Ag person, uh, could fill this role while uh, uh, working toward the education requirements uh, to be our Ag Commissioner. She's doing a great job and I don't think it makes sense to bring in someone from outside of the county to do this. Um, the last attempt with Jeff, uh, you know, it satisfied the legal requirements but we never saw him. And, uh, Jeff's done a great job in Humboldt County, but I, we haven't seen anything he's done here. And uh, I'd like to see some creative means of allowing uh, Angela to uh, serve in that capacity, in this capacity as a commissioner, even while working on her uh, requirements. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. Any other public comment? Um, I'm fine. We, the CAO is looking at all options to him, so. But this really isn't part of that. We're all allowed in that. Okay. So we're closed for public discussion. For us? Yes. Right, yeah, I had a question about it actually. Uh, seeing so, I, I, I believe Mr. Browers completely correct in his assessment. We've never seen this other gentleman because I've been here a lot of times the last few years and uh, we're in a position, I think, uh, that providing jobs in-house is actually a pretty good thing to do. If we have somebody in-house, maybe uh, we should look at that a little more closely and uh, try and uh, use our dollars better. I mean, I've never seen this other guy personally, so I'm just being real. I think if we have somebody in house, we should probably look at it. That's it. Okay. Remember, what we're doing here is just allocating the position. Right, no, I know. And just having discussions with the CEO. Right. Okay. Um, but we should do this. It's great. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts? I'd entertain a motion. So moved. We have a second. Second. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those, same sign. All right, we'll move on to 4.4. Approved master memorandum of understanding uh, with Trinity County Probation Peace Officer Unit, approximately $22,423 for fiscal year 1819 from the general fund. So, we're asking you to approve a 12-month memorandum of understanding with the Trinity County Miscellaneous Peace Officers defining certain compensation and benefits. Uh, the most recent bargaining agreement with the Miscellaneous Peace Officers did expire June 30, 2018. Uh, we've been in negotiations with the Miscellaneous Peace Officers since May of this year, and over the course of a few negotiation sessions, uh, we had an agreement in concept. We brought it to you, the board, in closed session on June 19th. He accepted it, directed our negotiating team to create an MOU, which I'm presenting to you today. The major provisions of this 12-month agreement are, um, the first thing, the miscellaneous peace officers requested to change the name of their unit to probation peace officers. The term is one year, expiring June 30, 2019. Under compensation and benefits, um, the county would be increasing employee salary by 2%. An additional clause 
is during the term of the agreement if any of the following units, management confidential, deputy sheriff association, general or skilled trades, if they receive greater than 2%, Salary increase, the difference between the salary received by those units and 2% shall be automatically applied to this particular bargaining unit. Uh, in addition to that, under general provisions, we've added a section for medical insurance and class and comp study issues. We're all agreed to continue to discuss modifications to the medical insurance premium payment, as well as uh, implementation of the class and comp study. And then finally, uh, during the term of this agreement, if in the following units, the, the four that I mentioned before, negotiate implementation of the class and comp to take place prior to July 1 of 2019, uh, the probation peace officers unit would retain the option to reopen negotiations immediately and have the option of implementing it as well. Okay, any questions? All right, on to the public, any questions? from the public. All right, come back here. Nothing else but retain the motion. So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same side. All right, 4.5, approve a master memorandum of understanding with the Trinity County Management and Confidential Unit approximately $86,071 for fiscal year 2018-19, uh, $36,253 from the general fund, and $49,818 from other funding sources. So uh, this term is very similar to the one we just discussed. Uh, this would be a 12-month MOU with the Trinity County Management and Confidential Unit. Um, again, we this uh, previous agreement had expired June 30, 2018. We were in negotiation since May of 2018. Uh, the negotiating team brought an agreement and concept to you, the board, on June 19th in closed session, uh, accepted the agreement and directed us to create an MOU, which again I'm presenting here today. And the major provisions of this is a 12-month agreement, July 1, 18 to June 30, 2019. Under compensation and benefits, they would receive a 2% increase to their salary. Um, let's see. Section 2B, the provisions set forth in this shall remain in effect until June 30, 2019. Uh, if during the term of this agreement and the following units, in this case would be probation peace officers, the Deputy Sheriff Association, general or skilled trades receive greater than 2%, the difference between the salary received by those should be automatically applied to the management confidential unit beginning the same date the other units go into effect. And then under the general provisions, again, the medical insurance and classification study issues, they agree to continue discussion for medical insurance premium payments during the term of the agreement, as well as uh, implementing, you know, preparing and implementing the class and comp study. And in addition to this one here, in making a good faith effort, they were asking to hold meetings no less than a monthly basis unless otherwise agreed upon by both parties um, regarding the medical insurance. And then finally, under this term, if uh, any other units, the ones that I mentioned prior, probation, peace officer, deputy sheriff association, general, or skilled trades, implement the class income, study prior to July 1, management and confidential shall retain the option to reopen negotiations immediately and shall have the option of implementing the class of the study. Okay. Any questions? All right. Any questions from the audience? All right. Bring it back. Entertain a motion. So mm moved. -hmm. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. All right. 4.6. Approve a master memorandum of understanding with the Trinity County General Unit, approximately $174,644 for fiscal year 1819, with $52,055 from the general fund and $122,589 from other funding sources. So the general unit MOU had expired on June 30, 2018. Again, we entered negotiations in May. Um, we 
came to an agreement and concept, brought it to the board June 19th, 2018, uh, we accepted the agreement, and we are bringing back the MOU to you today for approval. Similar to the others, it is a one-year, 12-month agreement, effective July 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019. Uh, we'd be providing a salary increase to 2%. Again, they are asking that um, if any of the other bargaining units receive a greater than 2% salary increase, um, that they would automatically be applied to the general unit beginning on the same day that the other units go into effect. Uh, under general provisions, they wanted a reopener for medical insurance and the class in compensation, so it's similar to the other uh, ones we just discussed. You can repeat it all within if you'd like. Okay. Okay, any questions? Any comment from the public? I'll bring it back. I'd like to make a motion to approve 4.6 uh, Memorandum of Understanding with the Trinity County General Unit as presented. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign. All right, 4.7, adopt a resolution which establishes non-represented management classification salaries and benefits, approximate $4,166 for fiscal year 1819 from the general fund. So uh, there is a small group of employees, uh, because of their job duties, are unable to be members in a union. Um, therefore, they have no collective bargaining abilities. Currently, there is one only, it states one employee within this group, but I discovered there's actually two, so I apologize for that oversight in the staff report. Uh, historically, these employees have been provided with the same level of salary increase and benefits of their represented counterparts, and the resolution before you consideration does just that. And it's my understanding that the, yeah, so I actually am missing one additional employee that was recently promoted, so their salary is not included in this, the 4,000. My apologies for that. Hey, do we have, a, do you have the number? I just discovered it this morning, so okay. I did not pull it through. Um, it would be a similar amount, approximately. An additional 4,000, is what you're saying? Probably. If you want, I can bring it back to the next board meeting correctly. Council? Well, I, I hate to ask you to do that, but since there might be members of the public who would be interested in what the actual number is, okay. can you bring it back? So, so the item should be continued until the next meeting? I'm sorry? The item should be continued to the next meeting. Or All right, but we still will allow public comment. Simon. All right, come back. Can I have a motion to continue? So I made motion to continue 4.7 until the next meeting, which is August 7th. Am I correct? Okay, thank you. Second. All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Put the same sign. All right, 4.8, adopt a resolution which establishes non-represented general classification salaries and benefits. Approximately uh, 11,654 for fiscal year 1819 from the general fund. So similar to the other item, uh, there are a small group of employees because of their job duties unable to represent themselves in a bargaining unit. Um, there are 10 employees within this group, and typically employees have been provided with the same level of salary increases and benefits as their represented counterparts. So we are requesting that you approve a 2% increase to the non-represented general unit employee salary and benefits. Okay. Seeing no questions, any comment from the audience? Seeing none, coming back. Entertain the motion. Motion to approve 4.8 as presented. Second. Well, uh, this is a resolution. Supervisor Mines? Yes. Supervisor Finley? Yes. Supervisor uh, Morris? Yes. Supervisor Gross? Aye. All right. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Yes. Um, um, if you could return the 4.7 for one minute. Okay. Um, 
resolution would call for a July 1 increase, correct? Correct. So the next meeting is going to be in August. At Momo, we don't allow retroactivity outside of the month of the approval. Um, so the, the motion should really include that the, the um, continuance of this matter will not affect this, the initi initiation of the um, compensation increase on July 1. Okay. Um, who needs to reopen? did the motion can't not necessarily um, I believe it depends on the vote how everybody voted for it everybody voted okay. for it I'll uh, move to reopen item agenda item 4.7 so but I guess you don't have a second so we're not going to do a second <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Would you like to further make the motion? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to, uh, am I tabling or, no, I'm not no. tabling. You, Louder. you are continuing. Continuing item 4.7 until August 7th, making sure that uh, the, uh, Pay stays in place for the for, at the current rate, and it's July not one. per July first, uh, twenty eighteen. Sorry, I really was. I should have been taking notes while you were talking. I didn't know I was going to be making the motion. There's the motion. Second. Go look. Hope you got a second. <laughs> Would you like to take the chairs? No, and I'm not going to. Well, <laughs> all right. All those in favor. Uh, sorry, oh, this no, is a resolution. A Supervisor Miles? Aye. Supervisor Fenley? Aye. Supervisor Morris? Aye. Yes. Supervisor Brooks? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. That was painless. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Not with me running it. 4.9, introduce and waive the reading of an ordinance amending Trinity County Zoning Ordinance 315, adding code section 43.1 pertaining to commercial cannabis micro business license. Unknown fiscal impact. I must recuse myself for the right. next two hours. Thank you, Mr. Mines. We'll get you when we're ready. All right, Supervisor Morris, do you want to start off? Sure. Um, Sorry. So this has come back from the PC. It's been back and forth a few times. I lost track. Um, so what we what has been added, uh, of course, um, is the ag preserve. I think that was added before. It's uh, we're in micro business. Oh, my apologies. I thought I pulled it. You are correct. So all right. Sorry. So there were some. Um, uh, minor additions and definitions, third party was defined as we re refer to it further in the ordinance. Um, the other thing that staff pointed out that I would ask the board to take in consideration, as well as Supervisor Groves, who's part of the ad hoc, is though this uh, item could move forward, we would ask that um, as staff pointed out to us, probably based on some feedback they heard at the uh, Planning Commission, that those who um, in the micro business world here who would like to manufacture items in the mechanical non volatile world in the RR zoning districts, that would be sent back to the Commission for further evaluation and discussion. Um, we also removed the requirement for specifying adult and medical. Um, you'll also notice that uh, under the micro business permit you could qualify for a director's use permit 
I mean, meeting uh, certain conditions rather than having to apply for a conditional use permit. If you meet those conditions, which are listed on page three under E. Um, there was some concern about uh, some privately owned and maintained road uh, issues, so there's some new language that was put in there on um, page three of six, letter G. Uh, it would require uh, your neighbors to um, weigh in and or uh, need to obtain uh, a conditional use permit. So those are the, uh, pretty much the, the, the rate is still prorated uh, on the licensing fees. Uh, I think our last time this came before us, the renewal date is upon renewal date versus a March 31st renewal date of licensing. Uh, you still are required to uh, have a cultivation license. Um, any, anything else, Supervisor Groves? Uh, I just want to clarify when you said that on the, on the road access mm -hmm. that the neighbors uh, must weigh in, that it's the neighbors may weigh in on, on road issues. Thank you. Um, with that, I think you've covered it. Um, Steph, did I? Uh, one thing that I would add, uh -huh. mechanical methods, mm -hmm. calling those out separately on any zoning district. RR would be the most common, mm -hmm. but the idea is there's there's no environmental impact with it. So that is why we were looking at calling them out three different categories. One would be non-volatile, mm -hmm. the other would be volatile, as are currently included in the manufacturing ordinance, but the third would be mechanical because there are no impacts associated with it. So I think our thought process is uh, once that goes back to the PC, right. we would add that third category yep. depending on what comes back to us. And we would look at that uh, once the manufacturing ordinance comes the, as the next item. Are we on the same page? Yep. Great. Okay. That's it. Just to be clear, we're asking for their advice. Right. We're not adding or not adding that's, at this time. That's right. We're sending it back for their advice. Um, okay, I think I think that those were the refinements or changes on micro business. And then, uh, short of that one question being sent back to the planning commission, this could move forward uh, if passed by the board. Anything to add? That's okay. it. Rick, do you have anything to add? All right. We'll open it up to the public comment. Good morning, John Brower from Junction City again. And uh, I missed uh, <clears throat> the last planning commission meeting on micro business, um, but it is shocking that it made it this far without including rural residential as a basic uh, uh, zoning type for this permit, and all other zones for which commercial cannabis is possible, commercial cannabis cultivation is possible. I could see, you know, possibly excluding, say, R1 or something like that, but the spirit of micro-business is to allow small pre-existing operators to have some kind of fighting chance in this crazy new industry. And this is designed for people that don't have industrial zoning, don't have commercial zoning, don't have ag zoning. If you do have, or if you are on one of those existing zoning types, you would just become a manufacturer. You just become a full distribution facility. It, so, this is absolutely fundamental to this license type: is the ability for mom and pops to perform as micro businesses. And um, the state is struggling with this right now in Sacramento. Um, the the talk around the campfire has has been that the the spirit of this was designed to um, allow cultivators mostly in the Emerald Triangle some fighting chance in this thing. Yet we don't have one micro business issued yet in Mendocino, Humboldt, or Trinity. All of them 
it's over 200 of them now are state licensed and they're all pre-existing retailers down south so now they are instantly vertically integrated and we still have zero distribution or manufacturing so I encourage you to take a very serious look at this and even consider don't passing this without mention of of these other zoning types. I can't believe it made it this far without obviously including rural residential. <clears throat> a couple other things. On page one of the discussion of the uh, staff report, it's, uh, it mentions that you'd have to participate in, manuf uh, in addition to cultivation, manufacturing, distribution, and non-storefront retail. I think we need to expand that to include all retail, be it non-storefront or real retail or brick and mortar retail. Uh, the microbusiness license type uh, could absolutely lend itself to a, a bun breakfast or a tasting room type of uh, uh, setting. If we move on to uh, page three of six, under regulations, uh, at one of the planning commission meetings, uh, it was the night that it passed in uh, the emergency regs, but uh, the, the, uh, the emergency regs now allow for a type S manufacturing license that is a shared facility for infusion type manufacturing. So cultivator license types could uh, participate in their own manufacturing provided they uh, met the education requirements to operate in the facility and um, it would be a, a, a type N uh, manufacturing facility but you would also have to be a cultivator uh, to uh, with a type S manufacturing it sounds like it's kind of a rider that might get added to cultivation license type even though they're different agencies it is yet to be fully worked out at the state but it's it's here now and as it gets worked out Trinity should absolutely be able to participate in this it seems like the land use impacts are minimal to none to add uh, the sharing of this uh, these facilities and it could be included even without going back to the Planning Commission possibly um, really quickly John a little further down uh, limiting the primary uh, hours of operation um, to, uh, on item H is it, it might make some sense but it's also putting the handcuffs on in some ways and we really need to limit how we do that uh, all non cultivation microbusiness activities conducted within accessory structures must not exceed the square footage of the related residents on the property that's silly and I understand keeping these, especially since rural residential isn't even mentioned in this ordinance, to have that in there is just silly. Of the, the handful of operators that I'm aware of that, that are seeking this license type, I don't know if, I only, there's four of them that are all living in tiny cabins, yet their entire commercial cannabis microbusiness footprint would have to stay smaller than the size of that cabin it, it's it's not realistic and needs to be dropped on the next page the limitation of uh, uh, pounds of product that can be distributed third-party product that can be distributed I, I do agree with the spirit of that and the, the 75 percent minimum Trinity County source product but these are pretty arbitrary numbers that got pulled out of the sky and we might consider expanding them, maybe doubling them right out of the gate. The 125 pounds, 250 pounds, 500 pounds of product. Um, if we are going to pull numbers out of the sky, I think we should probably make them a little bigger, at least in the beginning. The idea here is to give people a, a chance to get their feet under them. Um, and then the uh, 
well, I guess item H, <clears throat> that only be located in zoning districts where commercial cannabis licenses are allowed according to the respective ordinance. Um, the, to limit this micro-business license type to only zones where, for instance, manufacturing or distribution can be performed. That item H really needs to be worked on as you guys consider these other zoning types. This is really important. It, 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 it reads weird and and it's it's one more of the things I hope that you guys discuss here today. Um, I like to see the license good from date of issuance annually and um, there's a, a lot more work we need to do here. I think we need to include normal retail when we get to that and not just limit this to non storefront retail and the rest of these items that are just too limiting. Thank you. Good morning, Supervisor. This is Ben Brady from Wildwood. Um, I won't go over all the points that John just already went over, but I do agree with a lot of them. But I, I'll just make the comment that, um, you know, it's already going to be pretty hard for small cannabis businesses to survive. And so anywhere where we can increase flexibility is going to increase the viability of a cannabis business in Trinity County and the potential to stay afloat and contribute to the money coming into the county in all the different ways. So um, anywhere where we can, I think a lot of the conditions uh, on that list there are, I don't totally see the point of them. I would like to see a lot of them just removed altogether. Um, and I might be a little bit late to the party as far as the discussion of why some of them are included, but um, you know, definitely the amount of product that can be moved, the 75% um, thing, and, and the zoning things too, where they're allowed. I would just like to see them taken out altogether. I think that would, um, you know, just put those operators in a little bit better position to have success. They're, they're by definition small operators. They're not going to be huge operations anyway. But uh, anyway, thank you. Good morning, Deidre Brower. Um, I, I agree that you know the spirit of the micro business was to include the smaller farms, and we were always told when it came time for non-volatile manufacturing, we'll get into micro for the real residential. It'll just wait till micro, and that's excluded now. Um, also, in, in concerning the non-storefront retail, I believe the current language prohibits deliveries to hotels, so now we also can't bring it to, doesn't, I thought it was a residence to find. Okay. So if it does include hotels, great. Otherwise, my concern is that if they can't do that, then now nobody can go to a farm to purchase here either as a tourist. Um, on page three in the regulation section A, the language states uh, cultivating on an area of 10,000 square feet or less. I'd like that to be either license type or canopy, so there isn't confusion as to the designated area versus the canopy there. And uh, lower on, on letter I again, you know, requiring that the activities be less square footage than the related residents. It's, you know, a lot of people have large shops and small homes, and that really excludes more people. And then the limits on the pounds of product, I mean, oil versus flour, I mean, you have huge differences there, and I'm, I'm not really sure what the, what the goal of that one was. Um, and I guess that's it. Thank you. and hey, for, thanks guys for all your work. I have some questions with it in the transport areas of this. We're limited to $3,000 worth of product we can transport. Is that retail? Is it wholesale? Am I misunderstanding something? Because if I got to haul $3,000, huh? It's for retail. And that's for the time. Did it? Okay. I, I missed the last meeting also too, sorry. Um, 
in even our, it, even if that Kevin, I'll give you a little extra. But in ours, we've removed that. We just said you have to comply with state law. Okay, thank you very much because that was my biggest concern. I have people that are wanting like two hundred pounds at a time, and if I can only transport three thousand dollars, I'm making a lot of trips. Um, other question I, I have. your state rigs before you haul two hundred pounds. Oh yeah, right. I, I'm sure I have. Um, anyway, the other question. Uh, this S license, that'll be available to micro businesses, I'm hoping, because there's a lot of stuff we've already got to jump through hoops, and there's things I can't even do as a micro business, as is, that I won't be able to do on my premise. So the Type S is going to be really give us a lot more flexibility, and I don't know what, is it going to be limited to that? Is it, are we going to be able to do like, use someone else's impound for our product while it's getting tested and stuff? if we're not able to have an impound on our site. That's what I'm worried about, not being able to perform distribution operations on my site as doing impounding for a tester to come and test it. If I can have, the, if the S will cover me having an impound area somewhere else versus my property. Also the issue too with the size of the operation versus the house. I luckily have a large house. <laughs> So I'd be able to fit it within that square footage, but I'm actually considering converting the house to the processing facility and building a smaller dwelling on the site because it'd be a much more cost effective for me to do that than it would be to have to build all these facilities where the house would basically fill all those needs at this point. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all I have for now. Thank you. John has a question. Kevin. Kevin. Yes, sorry. I wasn't clear are you in favor of this ordinance or are you not in favor of the ordinance? Yes. Uh, I'm definitely or in no. favor of How the How do you want, do you want it to pass today or not? Yes. I also had another issue. That's all, Kevin. Thank you. Okay. Something I found out regarding this. Sorry. Next. That's it. Okay. Good morning. My name is Joseph Gaines. Um, I just moved to Hayfork and I have partners at Lucky Vista Farms. And it's very important that something is passed and passed soon so we have the ability to maximize our product, all right? But it's also important that this is amended later and changes are made, and you guys are open to that. That's all I have to say. Hi, Sebastian Cantero, Junction City. Um, I also want the micro business to pass, but I also want to be included in that. Um, promises were made early that rural residential would be included in the micro business uh, section of the ordinance so we could fully participate in this industry and as it stands now it does not look like I would be able to participate in this micro business ordinance which is severely going to devastate um, you know my ability to make income and compete in this very competitive market so um, I would ask that you guys make an amendment that would um, somehow allow rural residential to participate in non-volatile manufacturing for the purposes of micro business so I can do my own infusions and tinctures on my property which makes sense and also that I can distribute my own product out of my own property um, so I don't have to bring out of county strangers um, through the neighborhood and disturb you know disturb the neighborhood and disturb myself because this county requires we have a residence on our farm and I don't want you know strangers that are, you know that are coming to shop coming to my house um, my wife is pregnant it's just not an ideal situation and I would like to be able to do business like every other business and like we were promised that when we passed this ordinance when we all agreed that we were going to pass this ordinance micro business was told it was said that we were going to be included into them the rural residential was going to be included into the micro business section so um, those amendments could please be made with people like myself in mind um, to allow us to fully participate that would be great thanks a lot All right, any other? All right, with that, we'll bring it back.
Okay. Um, type S was maybe briefly discussed, but there wasn't a ton of information out at the time, so we're going to should have the PC look at that. Um, we can maybe discuss that at our next ad hoc, because I know we briefly mentioned it. It just came out a couple months ago, and, but there wasn't enough info to really have a discussion, if I recall correctly. Right. Retail uh, is a separate issue, and that will come forth through the PC, um, short of the non-storefront retail that's embedded in this ordinance. Uh, Retail is a whole different uh, discussion, and, it, and will is going to be its own separate ordinance, and we'll have to go through the PC through the regular process. There's a lot of uh, different items related to retail. It's a whole large discussion. So, um, in terms of and either Supervisor Groves or Leslie, I was just making sure. I don't see it. I was I was under the impression that the renewal date. Language, would, am I missing it? I wanted to double check that it's not renewed on March 31st, but when you obtain your license, that, that anniversary date is your renewal date. That is, that is under fees. It's section five, page five of six. Uh -huh. A little earlier, you misstated it, supervisor. I thought it was. That was all. I thought it was That's included, but I'm not really seeing it. Am I? Uh, under the fee section, it does say pay a annually from the date of issuance. Okay, thank you. Just want to make sure that there. that was in there. Because yep. that was our intention. Um, in terms of the, the RR, RR was, is included except for the mechanical, and that's what's going back to the PC for further discussion. Yeah, in the manufacturing ordinance, RR is not allowed, so it's we're not. I see what you're saying. So, we are saying in the micro business that you have to abide by the distribution and manufacturing side. So, the manufacturing does not allow an RR. So there would actually need to be an amendment to both. No, to manufacturing. That's right. That's so right. manufacturing would have to have, what we would send back is, um, which was one of Leslie's idea, that there would be another unit saying that uh, mechanical means for micro business only could be an RR or whatever they come up with. But that is a look at in the manufacturing. Here under H, you have to comply under the micro, you have to comply with. So that's that's what has to be looked at. That's out. where it gets cleaned up. Right. But I believe that John Brower's comment was regarding non-volatile in Type all six. zoning districts. Is that what your comment was? Yeah, the both that and distribution. That to participate in micro business is by by definition small and low impact, and to to not allow. Uh, type 6 manufacturing to not allow distribution uh, in, for instance, rural residential, uh, it just... It, it, it John, you can come back. Okay. And we are in discussion, and I'm sorry that Leslie asked you a question I out there. We should have done to that. Clarify, yeah. but to clarify, to separate type 6 John, into mechanical, we're done. We, we got and your, then non-volatile is John, we got what you won't want. It. All right, thank you. Yeah. So we understand that, okay. that that does have to go back to the PC to have long discussions down there on, on that issue. Okay, you were saying? I'm not clear, <laughs> but I'm confused. Um, I think we need to also clarify, um, this is maybe, on page 4H, if you have a cultivation license, I think H, maybe we need to clear up the language that's a little clearer. Uh, 
I, it seems clear to me that unless I heard members of the public differently, maybe I just didn't hear it from you. Basically, you're saying you have to comply with the the other license, uh, and then if, if there's some place where we're running into a wall, say the manufacturing, then the manufacturing would have to do. But the language in here seems fine to me. Okay. All right. So. Um, Other than that, I think those are the issues that we addressed and will either get addressed today or further down. So, I think it is when we come to the amount of product, mm -hmm. the distribution of product, I believe that our discussions are all entertained around flour uh, in the past. That's Personally, true. If I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. So, that would need to be cleaned up in the future or for the next reading. So there is a, it was mentioned from the public, flour versus oil. Right. So did that at all get discussed at the PC that you would call? There was a discussion about, uh, yes, there was flour well, versus oil. It was included. And we, there's we a didn't. huge difference, of course. Mm -hmm. And then um, they kept Considering public comment, they just kept those numbers. They kept them I'd like to have it. We should have it separate. Flour versus oil. That would be confusing to everybody involved. Your basis, the flour is the basis is that's the raw material that you're using. If you're turning up that into oil, that's that's fine, right. but you're only allowed to purchase that right. much flour. Right. And they felt that the PC was had that discussion. One more point, and then I'll be quiet. The state is looking at micro businesses if, as terms of gross product, or sorry, gross receipts annually. We realize that. And that might be one way to cap these. Um, yeah, that discussion has been held at the planning level. No. Uh, it's correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't rural residential excluded from distribution activities? Which I, don't is why have, I don't have that in front of me right now. Yeah, I, I, it, it, is. it is. It is. And that's why I'm encouraging you guys to include distribution and manufacturing for a micro business for people who are currently have a cultivation license in a rural residential to allow us to fully purchase. Of course, there are zero benefits in it. Yeah. I'd have to. That would be an issue we would have to look at in the future. We are, um, well, we can, we don't have distribution up here today. So whatever changes that dovetail into micro business has to be made within those specific ordinances. So we will take your note into consideration on distribution. And we'll have to double check. It could be there, I just don't recall. It's not. So we will look at it. So, Leslie, um, under Regulations I, I don't recall us putting that in. Was that put in by the Planning Commission? You're looking at Section 3I? Mm -hmm. uh, no, 2, 2I. Two it's the size of the building. Yeah. Unless that came out of the state rigs, that did not come from the ad hoc committee, so I don't know where. And so I would assume it came out of planning, so we don't know. So I don't know. Came out of that came, came out of what? Planning department or planning commission? Commission. Commission, okay. I don't recall exactly. I know it's one that the staff didn't have. Right.
Okay, so I'm not finding it specifically in their notes. Part of what happened when the micro business ordinance was initially proposed at the planning commission, it was tied to the home occupation and cottage industry ordinance. Right. And so then what we ended up doing was looking at all of the discussion that occurred in the planning commission, and they basically set thresholds for establishing where somebody would need a director's use permit versus a conditional use permit. And some of the conditions that were included in the home occupation and cottage industry ordinance, specifically there was a table that called out the differences with the director's use permit and the conditional use permit. This, this condition right here, letter I, is included in that table. And so I there I don't see in the minutes I'm not seeing that it was specifically addressed. I think that's a remnant from that original inclusion. That's the only thing. I can look into it more. I'm trying to figure yeah, this out. I remember right now. Yeah. But um, that was one of the reasons that we tried to get away to some extent, getting away from that that home occupation and cottage industry ordinance because referring back, trying to get this to fit into that framework was too awkward. Mm -hmm. And it was even more limiting, <clears throat> excuse me, it was even more limiting. And so that's why the ordinance took shape the way that it has now. And we dropped that trying to put it into that table mm -hmm. or even into that ordinance. But this specifically is included in the table. Rick just looked that up on his phone. Okay. So does that yeah. answer? Mm -hmm. For me it does. With that case, I would recommend that we strike. Me too. I mm -hmm. was just going to say that. Thank you, you guys both for that mm -hmm. refreshers course there, because I forgot about the chart. All right, and then on 2A, um, we can clear that up a little bit by by adding the license types versus just on area 10,000 feet or less um, because the licensee could actually have a, a larger license and but only doing on 10,000 feet or less so addition of the license types that qualify would be not good there. Where would you put that? I'm sorry, Here. I'm sorry that's under regulations two, two uh, okay. okay, and what language would you start proposing? That we use the license types and not the square footage that the program is cultivating on. Okay, got it. 10,000 license, 5,000 license, especially cottage, cottage, mm -hmm. you know, those, those numbers. Like. Should we just say license types that are eligible for micro business? Yeah. I would spell it out. I mean, because it just short and sweet. So with that, I have no further uh, changes on that. Okay. Um, and did we decide on the f on the flour on the 125, 125, 200, 500 pounds of flour? We did not. Your recommendation is we have both the flour and oil. Oh, in terms of, I mean, I, in the end, not, you know, it was raised in public comment. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Chair, I would, if they could elaborate a little bit on that statement, would you mind bringing the public um, member up? I don't really want to do planning commission work up here. <laughs> I get it. This went through the commission, so in their stand, they they're allowed to distribute 125 pounds. Up to five. Okay. Up to five of product. So, do you have any clarity on? on their thoughts on that? Uh, they received comments from the public regarding that, and then they um, they didn't have a lot of discussion regarding that. 
that was something that they deferred a little bit more to public comment mm -hmm. um, with less of a, it, there was less of a land use question to them. Mm -hmm. They went back to impacts that would be associated with land use rather than the production of number, right. the, the limitation of pounds. They were looking at number of employees and traffic. Mm -hmm. so what, what I would do is when we send back the other um, section, I'd ask for clarity on that. The right, because they amount. changed, the, they, they cleaned this up to what was sent to them, and so they try to simplify this. So uh, I'll take them at their word, right, for today that product means product and any type of product. Okay, so the question is um, well, at this point, we don't have the ability to vote, but um, okay. we only have two members. I know, but where did our third disappear to? I don't know. Um, and we've had discussion with the uh, Before you do anything, today the agenda I was to wait the first reading and, and continue the ordinance for adoption. Right. You just are you're making significant changes to it. Right, you can't adopt it this way. You can't move it forward. We're not has making to come back for it. Changes. Yeah. We're not okay. making changes. We're having one. We're having one bit of item that will go back to the PC, and the rest is pretty much the same. So the question. Uh, the, the saying is we're asking for we're just making clarity changes yes. not significant land use changes um, well what are you approving for it for it to move it on to a second reading i don't know what you're approving because you, you sent you this one back to the planning commission it's not ready for it's one i one sliver is going back to them which is what we've done before and has gone back to the planning commission. Okay. So the question's going to be, is, is the RR question still remains out because that's actually not part of this ordinance. That's part of manufacturing and distribution. So that would be going back. Clarity on the one issue, but we're leaving it the same. What we have done is struck one of the items and then we added some clarity ver verbiage um, on, instead of saying <coughs> in 10,000 feet, we're spelling out the, the licenses. So the question to you is, does that mean we have to come back for another first reading? In the past, we haven't. But that's not to pit you against your partner. <laughs> Normally, in this type of situation, I would say yes, it comes back for another first reading. You're going to have the planning commission look at it at all for any purpose. Then, when it comes, what you should be doing on the first reading is reading an ordinance that's going to be fine on the second reading. Well, the commission part isn't isn't part of this discussion. Right. Okay. And, and that's, that's. And so fine. that's a separate. If that's it's a, a separate change, no. It doesn't have to go back to another first meeting. If it's a small change. There was just a very long discussion here that I didn't understand whether that was inside the ordinance, outside the ordinance, or what was happening. So, so the piece that's going to uh, the Planning Commission is tied to another ordinance, but it does dovetail ultimately into what you can do as a micro business license holder. And then if it doesn't affect the language of that document, that's right, it's fine. Right, it does not. Then it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, the clarification changes you made are small. And as I said, the minimum change. Mm -hmm. You probably get away with doing this first reading and adopting it for, and, and continuing it for a second reading uh, with this change. Well, 
Yeah. 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 With, with the vice chair, uh, we, we take a five minute break and the vice chair can go and talk to see what's going on. Yeah. Did y'all agree with You take a five minute break. <laughs> softer because I'm hearing that not All right. So um, we've gone to public. We've brought it back here. We've made some uh, non, what was the term? De minimis. Yeah, de minimis. De minimis changes to the, to the ordinance. So um, I will go down uh, on item 2A. Clarifying, it says the county's cultivation license program cultivating on an area less than 10,000 feet or less. We've asked that the actual license types be put into that that qualify. Uh, item 2i, we have struck it. And do you have any other changes that? Uh, I don't know any other changes. Not for this. Right, right. Correct. No. And we're not going to talk about anything else. So with that, I would enter, entertain a, a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Supervisor Finley. Uh, discussion. Yes. I'm not really clear whether the public wants this or not, to be honest with you. I have no idea really what, what's going on. I'm really very disappointed in having a public roundtable on an item that many of my constituents are not able to participate in right now because this is not the agenda item and it was not published. That is the one reason I stepped out because it, as far as I'm concerned, it's a Brown Act but violation because you had a public roundtable without many of my constituents being informed per a public open agenda. How so? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not discussing this with you right now. It's not how so, it's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. So that's my, the end of my discussion. Talk to the chair. If you're so, um, I second it for discussion. Okay, so for discussion standpoint, this is not out of the abnormal of what we've done when we these get brought. Uh, I'm, I am disappointed that this discussion wasn't taken down at the Planning Commission and these items brought forward since they were talked about being basic items uh, that people wanted, but, but it didn't seem to happen that way. It came up and in the end, there was very minor changes. And that's not a problem. And I, I agree with the minor changes since we're discussing this right now. And I also was not in attendance the last time this was allowed to happen with the public round table with people participating and, and having a non-published uh, agenda item or a board meeting that the public was not able to participate in. So let's move forward. That's, I just have a question, it. John. Yes. What do you mean by not published? 
because it was a published long ago with at the commission level. Okay, fine. Play that game. Play that, that's fine. Play that game, Judy. I don't, I'm just getting some clarification. No, you're not. You're saying that it was published at a different time in a different place. That's how it typically um, happens. Just from a staff standpoint, uh, we notice uh, we have been through this whole process. We notice right. the discussion with the Planning Commission of the cannabis. And, and that was noticed also for today's agenda item. The item was not we, to look at this and uh, we only move forward that, or not move forward with this item. We've only, uh, I'm just telling you our process. We've only I understand the, the process. At the right. planning commission, but we have not noticed you, did the board you, items. Did you, yeah, you did not notice that this was going to be a much larger discussion than actually happened. It, a large discussion happened today. And many other people, many of my constituents were not allowed to participate in it because they did not know that this would be a large discussion. This would not be, this was going to be an open agenda item where people would be able to uh, talk further than they were allowed to and also make suggestions to this board. It's not the it was public Like John, I was just saying that. Uh, this has been the practice on this the whole time, and uh, that you've done these regulations as they, they've come forward. And people have <coughs> made statements, and I, I agree I allowed too much comment out of the audience, and I apologize for that. We should have stuck with the three minute rule. Um, but it is not unusual for the board to discuss and make changes of these at this level. And these changes are minimal and that's terrific. What's going on there earlier was not minimal. And, and that, that's terrific, that's fine. That's the chair's decision. Move on with it. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, with that, I call for the vote. Supervisor Finley? Yes. Supervisor Morris? Yes. Supervisor Gross? Yes. What do you think? What do you just approve? All right, let's move on. What was the motion that you just approved? What is that? What ordinance? With the changes or without the changes? What was just, what was agreed upon right now? The ordinance with the changes, the two changes made has passed to go to a second reading. Thank you. All right, introduction. Introduce and waive the reading of the ordinance which amends the Trinity County Zoning Ordinance by adding section uh, 4320 regarding cannabis manufacturing introduced April 17th and May 1st. So this would be the second or third first reading? Correct. After third um, first reading. Third first reading. After back and forth to the commission throughout the year. So this was the last, it's been a while, so if I recall correctly, was the most recent discussion was adding Ag Preserve um, and some other legal boundaries uh, that not being allowed was included. Those were discussed at the PC. And I think that uh, those are the really two uh, that came up from the, piece, the most recent PC meetings of those two items. I have that right, Leslie. Do you want to try to make the new us? Yes, this, and, and I apologize, this was passed previously, not this ordinance, but we were just amending the, the already passed right. manufacturing ordinance. Right, thank you for that clarification. Um, what we were asking is that these are, these really are the only two amended items to this ordinance and that we would ask the, the other one item that is not included in this item to still for, be further discussed at the PC was the RR question for manufacturing mechanical you know what I'm talking about yes okay which is not included in this ordinance. Any questions, John? Nope. 
All right, we'll open up to the public, and we remind you we are discussing the two changes in this, and this was the Ag Preserve and the legal boundaries, uh, for lack of a better term, the opt-out zones. Ben Brady. Um, uh, this is great. Let's pass this with, with the two amendments. Um, just on when you guys are talking about sending it, sending the RR consideration back to the Planning Commission for consideration and inclusion in Type 6, I would also just request that you can um, look at adding Ag Forest to that as well. Thank you. Good afternoon, board. Thank you again for bringing this forward. Um, I would really like to see this one get passed. I was hoping today to be able to um, have one of my partners from the Bay Area here to express how much money they're making on us right now down there because we don't have this manufacturing ordinance and being that about 80% of the industry is based in manufacturing, I guarantee that they're also making about 80% of the amount right now. And uh, that's primarily my concern. I have one, I'm, I absolutely want this to get passed, please. My one question in the language is uh, Section 4 Regulations B. It doesn't make it very clear if a, a variance is allowed for, for the setback from the youth oriented facility, so on and so forth. It says 1,000 feet, and it breaks the, with a pencil, with a period, changes subject, and it says that you can get a variance for, you know, from 500 feet of authorized school bus and so on. I would hope to see that that variance is included for both setbacks. Three minutes, John. Once again, John Brower from Junction City. Apologies for speaking up turn earlier. I get it. I'll try to limit that. Um, the two issues I have with this are the obvious inclusion of other zoning types. Um, we either need the ability to get manufacturing and distribution um, out in the hills or micro business. They're, they're, they're quite separate. Microbusiness is a far scaled down uh, uh, use of both manufacturing and distribution and people up in the hills have to have it. The biggest changes uh, that I would like to see here is the addition of the Type S shared facility, which shouldn't have any land use implications, but it's, uh, it's another license type that needs to be included. And um, if we look at page three of seven, uh, under C, it's it's one of the changes. It it uh, it adds uh, so cannabis manufacturing facilities shall not be allowed within the following areas, and it adds I I. It reads within the legal boundaries of the historic district of Weaverville. I think that makes a lot of sense. Coffee Creek Volunteer Fire District. Trinity Center Community Services District, and within the following area of the Lewiston Community Services District, and it defines that, Lewiston has spoken loud and proud to, to opt out. I think we should honor that. But then at the end it says, after it describes the Lewiston District boundaries, which are in proximity to high density areas, and therefore create a substantial risk of public nuisance. I don't think we should include that in this ordinance at all. It, it's, I think it's an attempt by somebody to lay the groundwork for the notion that um, man, can, uh, licensed commercial cannabis manufacturing create a substantial risk of public nuisance. No, it doesn't. It creates jobs. I think we should drop that entirely. And the, another thing that I question is, on the following page, under regulations, item G, applicants must apply for certified unified program agencies, CUPA, which for Trinity County is administered through the Trinity, or sorry, administered through the Department of Toxic Substances Control. We still don't know what this is. We've asked environmental health to come speak to this numerous times. 
still not here. And uh, to put this mandate on people when nobody in the room even understands it is unreasonable. Thank you. Any other public comment? Deidre Brower. Um, my limited understanding of Coupa, and I remember we, we tried to get some clarification before, and it's kind of a mystery, but is that you need to produce at least 55 gallons of hazardous waste in order to qualify. So my, my concern in here, would, at, at a minimum, would be that we leave some have some language in there that says, you know, if you're exempt, then you're exempt from, from the SCUPA requirement. And knowing more about it would, would be great, too. Thank you. All right, any more public? Everyone asked anything for um, I had got a notice from the BCC yesterday regarding temporary licenses for all all types of operations. If you don't have your temporary license, if your temporary license expires after January 31st or December 31st, you will not be able to get an extension. So we need to be able to get our temporary licenses more than 120 days before the end of the year at the state level. I'm wondering if you guys are going to give us authorizations or like temporary licenses while we're in the process of getting our final county license so we can apply and get our temporary state licenses before we're within that window. Otherwise, we're going to lose 90 days of our temporary license usage. Thank you. <laughs> Any other public comment? Okay, public comments closed. Um, I will go on about Coupa endlessly. Um, um, Coupa, uh, all you have to do is go to the state toxic website, and there's the Trinity County Coupa right there. And you sign on to that, and uh, there's two counties that are administered by the state. I think it's us and Imperial. I could be wrong there. But you have to have a license, even to have a license to say you don't need a license. So it costs me about $385 a year, and you fill out this paperwork saying that you're, you don't have uh, waste or, uh, for example, anything over 55 gallons of gasoline. You have to have, uh, they come in and say, you know, you stay with chemicals and it's under X amount of pounds. They say you have to have a plan not to have a plan. It's, they're really nice. You just write them a check and do what they tell you to do, and they move on. So, okay. a uh, question for Leslie or Rick. Uh, if I recall, this is going back a ways. Egg Forest was looked at for manufacturing months ago, maybe. version that I have of it here was from October 18th, of course, okay? And in the first version, uh, there is no Ag Forest listed anywhere, not for Type 6, nor for Type 7. So, in addition to what we discussed on RR for the non-volatile mechanical only, can you just have them look at Ag Forest in general for whatever yes. license type under manufacturing? I thought it was, but I, you know, 
the type S and then of course we'll have to dig into type S what the state is declaring type S is but oh and I would entertain a motion uh, I so made second and that's to adopt as is as is right um make a motion to adopt 410 as presented all right second well, supervisor Morris Yes. Supervisor Friendly? Yes. Supervisor Gross. Aye. All right. Now on to the addendum. Okay. Planning and zoning. Approved amendment one with SHN Consulting Engineers and Geologists Inc. to provide general service support to the planning department on an on-call basis for an amount not to exceed $100,000 subject to rounding for form and content. No impact to the general fund not to exceed $100,000 from the Planning Department's Cannabis Division. Um, my apologies to the board. Uh, when we were putting together the staff finding, uh, we included the original contract, but we did not include the change order. Uh, but I did explain in the staff report, and Tina's going to hand out the uh, the part that was missing. Oh, do we get copies for? Oh, I see what you're doing. Got it. Okay. And it's just. That's all got copies. You need to get two. Each. Yeah. One of each. All right. We're good. Okay, um, uh, a couple months back, we had uh, brought on services from SHN to uh, assist us with uh, processing of uh, uh, CIPs or C, capital, or uh, conditional use permits uh, for um, different types of uh, manufacturing and micro and eventually micro business or the different types of permits that we have that require use permits so that we didn't uh, fall behind in the use permit processing. Uh, it's been going moving forward and it's been pretty successful. Um, there are things that we're waiting for with different applications concerning uh, uh, reports that are needed to complete it but we're going to start coming to a point where uh, some of these um, uh, processes are coming to fruition. Uh, since that time, uh, we've had, um, uh, we have had some uh, uh, staff revisions uh, where we were back down to the, to the uh, deputy and a planner. Uh, we've since brought on a temporary assistant planner and we have been out recruiting. Uh, we've recruited probably four times for a senior planner unsuccessfully. We can't bring on senior principal seniors. Uh, but um, uh, candidly, we're to a point where we need to get a lot of significant work done on the planning side. In addition to what we have going on on the cannabis side, we have shortfall on staff, so we can't produce the volumes that we need to produce to meet the regulatory deadlines that we have. So we asked the, the consultant that was already on board um, uh, since they did not really have any projects going on at the time, would they also be able to assist us with planning activities and to broaden their scope of work and uh, bring them on board. <coughs> so with this, this this contract is reflecting that to go from $25,000 to $100,000. It's a uh, not to exceed amount and it's strictly based on a uh, need. Uh, but the need is, is that we, in order to be able to process in a timely manner, we need to put together the folks that can help us get the work done. So with that I can answer any questions. No. Yes. <laughs> yes, Supervisor Morris. <laughs> um, so Rick, I'm all for getting things moving on whatever category we need to get moving on. 
we brought SHN into what in early winter, February? Yes. And I know the main goal there was to handle CUPs, uh, whether it's type three license or those other type licenses that require CUPs. Uh, if I recall correctly, we only had one go before the commission um, so far of a CUP. Um, well, we have, I don't believe any have. Uh, have we have. You've had one. My, my official. Yes. I know we've had, uh, there's six applicants we we're processing. Okay, right I know you now. had one and it went through the PC. I think that was the wholesale nursery, if I recall. And so I'm a little concerned. I do, what, what do we have up on deck that's going to hit the PC soon that are CUP related through this firm? There are four CUPs that are currently on deck. 